Happy Sunday morning. We're so glad that you are here this morning. My name is Ron Frost. I'm a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the center. And I want to begin by greeting you with the word Namaste. Namaste means the divinity within me recognizes, honors, and blesses the divinity within you. Now, no matter where you may be listening from, whether it's Facebook or YouTube, whether you're local to the Sarasota area or you're somewhere else on this great, beautiful planet, even if you're a person that's a regular or the first time, we're simply here to support you in that re personal relationship of the God of your understanding and to discovering the truth that you already know, that's already within you. Now, we begin each week by sharing our vision and mission statement. The words can now be seen on your screen. Feel free to join along. Our vision is empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive, worldwide community. In our mission, we teach science of mind principles and other life-affirming spiritual truths. We explore, learn, grow, connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, in service, and we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. And now before we, before we listen to Reverend Karen's message, let us take a moment to simply center ourselves, to feel our inner peace, to let go of the outer world, to relax, to sit in a comfortable position, to close our eyes, and just breathe as Fani and Bob take us away with some music called I Am Opening. Our hearts are ready 
to receive. We are opening. We are opening. Our hearts are ready to receive. I am opening. My heart is ready to receive. To receive all the love, all the light, and all God's glorious good. Because I know that there is one infinite creator that's behind all things. No matter what shows up in life, there is really only one thing. Call it divine source, creator, spirit, or simply by the word God. It is that which is infinite in intelligence, all supportive, all loving, and expresses in so many magnificent and unique ways. And as I know that I am one with this source, I know that this is the same truth for all that are that are listening at this now moment. I know it's the same truth for everyone. So as I speak my words and I proclaim my truth, I'm proclaiming the truth for everyone. That I am loved, I'm supported, and that the divine lives and expresses in every way, shape and form to support my greater good to bring harmony, peace, joy, wholesomeness, health, well-being, and abundance. I know that I have that infinite support, that it surrounds me and it lives within me and expresses as my life. And I know that my inner genius, my inner uniqueness, is always being honored, always being recognized by the many opportunities that are reflected back to me. I know this truth and I anchor this truth for myself and for all that are listening. In the heart-centered field of gratitude, as I release this and surrender this to the law of infinite good, knowing it is done, and so it is. Once again, we're blessed with another wonderful message from our own spiritual director, Reverend Karen Wolfson. The title of her talk is Your Inner Genius. And the one thing I know about Reverend Karen is her inner genius truly shines through as our spiritual director and every message that she delivers through her stories, through her authenticity, through the compassion that we feel, even through Facebook and YouTube when we listen to her. But before we hear from Reverend Karen, here is Fani and Bob to lead us off with a Karen Drucker song called Beauty in You. And pure sweet love I 
see the goodness in you. I see the wisdom in you. I see the strength in you. And so it is. I see the joy that's in you. I see your light shining through. I see the love that's in you. And so it is. I can see it. It's right there before me. I can feel it deep in my soul. I just know it that you are an angel full of magic and power and pure sweet love. I see the grace that's in you. I see the courage in you. I see the heart that's in you. And so it is. I see the beauty in you. I see the power in you. I see the greatness in you. And so it is. I see the beauty in you. I see the beauty in you. I see the power in you. I see the power in you. I see the greatness in you. I see the greatness in you. I see the goodness in you. I see the goodness in you. I see the wisdom in you. I see the wisdom in you. And I see your strength, your strength. I see the strength in you. And I see your joy, joy, joy. I see the joy in you. I see your light. Shining light, I see shine. the light in you. I feel the love that's in you. I see the love that's in you, and I see the grace that's in you. I see the grace in you. I see the courage in you. I see the courage in you. I see the heart in you. I see the heart in you. So it is, and so it is. And so it is. Hello, everyone. I see the beauty in you, as the song says. I see the power, the goodness, the love, the magic, the wisdom, the strength, the joy, the light the grace, the courage, and the heart. I see the greatness in you. And so it is. I see the genius in you. I see the infinite, irresistible, creative genius in you. In fact, that's my theme for the month of March. Your inner, infinite, irresistible, creative genius. More about that in a moment, but first let's check in. It has been a year since we began meeting in this way, and believe me, I am so happy knowing you are out there. Each one of you, as you stayed with us, and some of you who have joined us for the first time in this most interesting year, but just know that I am so happy that you are out there. And I, I think about you all the time and ask the question in my mind, how are you doing? Because I know this has been a really difficult and challenging time for so many of you. So how are you? You can let me know with a quick email. And if you're watching us on Facebook Live, we enjoy your letting us know where you are and of course the comments you leave. I just love when you let me know that you're out there. And to you, our team of financial contributors, you have been an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our, our message and our caring and our connection. And we'll probably continue doing this for the next few months. So thank you for standing by us. And thank you all for joining with us today. You know, as I think of you, I continue to affirm and to see you as vibrantly healthy and abundantly supported in every way. So, my title for today and the remaining Sundays in March is Your Inner Infinite Irresistible Creative Genius. Just think, what if 
What if everyone on the planet discovered and lived from their inner, infinite, irresistible, creative genius? Talk about empowering spirituality, as is our vision. Empowering spirituality as a loving, inclusive, worldwide community. What a world! You know, discovering that inner genius is the very essence of empowering spirituality. And it's within every human being everywhere. So, just what is your inner creative genius? How does it show up and how can you rediscover it? Well, it is the sweet spot of your unique essence. It is at the core of your being. You were born with it. Dr. Dennis spoke last week about your redefining moments. In the, in, in, along the lines of this very theme, he said the, life, this, the redefining moments were the life's journey of becoming who you were born to be. That unique spark of life you were from the moment you were born. Author Gay Hendricks calls this your zone of genius in his book titled The Big Leap, which is about taking that leap into living from your inner genius. And he writes that your zone of genius is who you and only you really are. And listen to this very carefully. Who you, who and only you really are behind your labels, behind that identity you may have adopted based on who people told you are, or told you you are. He goes on to say that when living in and from your inner genius, you discover endless creative expansion. You discover energy and serenity and joy, exhilaration and deep fulfillment. Wow. <laughs> Why is that? Because this is the very essence of, your, of you your vibrant vitality, your divine self. That is God, the infinite, expressing life as your creative genius. So, of course, it would be all of those things. So, my invitation to you today is let's go out this week and be creative geniuses expressing all of that aliveness. Why? Well, because of the, in the words of the great theologian and activist Howard Thurman, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Amen to that. And yet you might have this question floating around in the back of your mind. You know, why at this point in my life should I consider finding and living from what you are calling my inner creative genius? Well, here's a news flash. The author Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, also wrote a book called The Big Magic. It's a wonderful book. And in it, she says, she asks the question, she says, are you considering becoming a creative person? Well, it's too late. You already are one. If you're alive, you are a creative genius. <laughs> Ernest Holmes, the architect of our philosophy, said, Life has entered into you with the irresistible impulse to create. That is, to live from your inner creative zone of genius. And furthermore, I will add that when you live from that place, that inner life God energy, it has everything you need for living out your genius. So you're not just thrown out there to figure it out and make it up. You have, yes, you use your, you use your ability to think, but you have everything you need to support you because that's the nature of the creator created you out of itself. Remember as Eddie Watkins Jr.'s song says, what are we going to create today? The universe is ready to play. Spirit surely will lead the way if you just say yes to life. And life, we're talking about the same life force that makes the flower grow and bloom from a tiny seed. It's the same power that's in the rosebud that opens all by itself. 
and the tiny seedling that becomes the mighty tree. And we all know that and have heard that many times, but let's pause for a moment and really get the power of that life force. Here's an example of just how unstoppable it is. Up in the northeastern land of Siberia, frozen land of Siberia, there was a team of scientists who found a treasure trove of seeds that had been buried for 30,000 years. It, they figured some type of squirrel had buried them. And these scientists took those seeds and through a very rigorous and patient process, nurtured these 30,000 year old seeds into blossoming plants. That life force was there <laughs> waiting to be nurtured into appearance 30,000 years later. And before that, um, there were other instances of that, but particularly they also mentioned in this article that a date palm had been grown from seeds oh, that were roughly only 2,000 years old. <laughs> You and I have that same life force in us, behind every breath we take and in every heartbeat. As Ernest Holmes said, believe with utmost simplicity and complete faith that there is a pattern of your being, the real spirit of you, which is eternal and indestructible. And this pattern is ever seeking to manifest through you Back of it all is the will and purpose of the universe, all the irresistible laws of being. It is because that is there that you have your irresistible urges, even longing to live life ever more fully. I'm going to say it's the call to live from your inner genius. So I thought I would share with you my story today about experiencing this. And I will say that through the years I have experienced it in many areas of my life in many ways, but this was the first time I was aware of it. Several years ago, I was working in sales and training for a top corporation, but I was increasingly aware of an inner yearning. I mean, a real yearning to do something else. I had no idea what that would be I did know that I felt increasingly unfulfilled working in that corporate environment. Now, meanwhile, I had discovered a large church that taught science of mind principles, as we do here at the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. I was thrilled to find that, and I took every class available, all the way up from basic classes to practitioner training to ministerial classes, even though I had no interest in being a minister, but I kept on taking classes because I wanted to know more and more. Why? Because I was learning to use these principles in my life and, of course, at work, and things continued to change for the better. Now, I even, even though I still felt burdened and trapped by my job, it just felt so meaningless and it, it was just not me. And certainly not operating from my zone of genius, not tapping my inner creative genius. And then in one of my Science of Mind classes, the teacher shared an example that really got my attention. The class was about developing a consciousness that would manifest our desires. And of course, we all have those desires. We want to know, what do I need to do to manifest these? And he said, here's an example. If you want a new car, start treating your old car with the same care and respect and even the loving joy that you would the new car that you so, so yearn for. Rather than your usual MO of neglecting your old car, complaining about it, especially if it's unreliable, well, you get the picture. Treat it just the way you would treat that brand new car you want. In other words, he was saying, develop a new car consciousness. Well, I realized I had been thinking of my job, sort of like that old car. I complained, I resented it, I couldn't wait to get out of it. But after that class, I did a 180. I embraced my job. I brought my whole self to it. 
I focused, especially on the things I liked, even though, even if there were only a few and if I only liked them a little bit. But that's where I put my attention. And I paid less attention to the things I didn't like. And you know, things began to change and rather dramatically. I found that people started to be extraordinarily cooperative and helpful, even going out of their way to be supportive of whatever projects I needed to accomplish. And then totally new opportunities, very different from anything before, started to show up. Opportunities for me to just kind of one-on-one -on -one teach and mentor some of my colleagues, some of the newer, newer employees. And then sometimes it was just an opportunity to listen and encourage a colleague who was having a difficult time. And I noticed that these experiences so fed my spirit. And, I, and it felt meaningful to be doing these things. And then there were new programs initiated from corporate headquarters of all things. <laughs> they were completely different than any that we had experienced before. And I had been with this company for a lot of years. And I found that these new projects, new initiatives that, they, uh, that came down from headquarters really tap the gifts that I would have never thought I'd be using in a corporate setting. Now, meanwhile, my science of mind class studies led to the ministerial level curriculum. Remember, I was not interested in or intending to become a minister, uh, but I was taking these classes because I just loved what I was learning. Well, the ministerial class curriculum, as you can imagine, was more demanding than the previous classes. And, you know, there was lots more reading and lots more papers to write and projects to do. And just at that time, a new corporate position was created where I was working. I paid no attention to it until the manager of that new position came and asked me if I would step into that role. He said, I was thinking of you it would be perfect for that role. Well, it meant I would be mostly working in the office rather than traveling which was absolutely perfect for me when I needed to be local, needed the time for all of my extra classwork demands. Of course, I took that position, and as I said, it was perfect. Meanwhile, my te <clears throat> teacher minister had asked me to do some platform work too, speaking and so on, and this was a big center. It had about a 1,000 members, so it was a new challenge for me, but I took it. And then I was taken aback as some of the church members in casual conversation started, started to say to me, you're planning to become a minister, aren't you? <laughs> and I always said, absolutely not. I'm, I am open to a career change, but certainly not ministry. <laughs> Until one day, shortly after I had finished my ministerial classes, my minister asked me, would you consider being our full-time assistant minister. And without missing a beat, I heard myself saying, yes, yes, I just knew. My new career consciousness, my new car consciousness, <laughs> my new career consciousness had done its thing. You know, it always does. Sometimes it feels like it's taking forever. It takes time and it's not always easy. But there it was. So it took a couple of months to make the transition from my corporate job to that of minister, just getting things organized and settled. And as I say, making the transition, that was in 1988. And by the way, do you know, shortly after that, I heard that the newly created job that I had taken for my final year was eliminated. <laughs> the universe, do you suppose, just sent it there for me? just for that time, I choose to say yes. I discovered in the words of Joseph Campbell, if you do follow your bliss, your genius, you put yourself on a kind of track that has been there all the while waiting for you. Follow your bliss, he says, and the doors will open where you didn't know they were going to be. Now I will add that this path of mine has been at times the most difficult and agonizing and challenging 
while also being the most profoundly fulfilling and blessed with totally mind-boggling coincidences, synchronicities, open doors, opportunities, support, and more. Now, in closing, until next week, I want to tell you I have used the example of my career here, but this same experience is available every day in any situation, big or small. Remember, in God, there is no big or small. So we'll talk about, we will talk about this more in the next couple of weeks. But for today and for this week, let's go out there being creative geniuses. In the words of author Jay Shetty, you can't be anything you want, but you can be everything you are. Like Karen Drucker's song, the Fawny's going to sing for you. Let your big, bright, brilliant beam of radiant light shine. That's your genius. And I'll see you soon. Gonna be the first on the dance floor, the first to raise my hand. The first to state my opinion, the first to take a stand. Won't play it safe and wait for a sign. I'm gonna throw myself out there and let my light shine. Let it shine, let it shine. I let my big, bright, brilliant beam of radiant light shine. I'll be on Oprah and Conan, 60 minutes in the view. I'll be talking about me and all the things I do. I'll be the one who sets the bar, the one who's in the know. Folk will come to me to see where fashion trends will go. Cause I shine, yes I shine. I let my big, bright, brilliant beam of radiant light shine. For too many years, I've hidden my life. Fearing I was too much and who I was just wasn't right. Then I heard this voice from within and up above saying, You're here to be a shining light and give and receive love. So I'm gonna hold my dreams, nothing in my way. Carpe diem is my mantra, practice karmas every day. Take time to connect, take time to have fun. I want to know I use up every drop before my life is done. Cause I shine. Yes, I shine. I let my big, bright, brilliant beam of radiant light shine. For too many years, I've hidden my light, feeling I was too much and who I watched this wasn't right Then I heard this voice From within and up above Saying you're here to be a shining light And give and receive love I am a woman of power A woman of grace The life that I live In every wrinkle on my face And I love myself So I can love you too And I know when we're connected They ain't not we can do so let's shine let's all shine let's let our big bright brilliant beam of radiant light shine i see you shine yes you shine i see your big bright brilliant beam of radiant light shine watch me shine oh shine i let my big bright brilliant beam of radiant light shine shine yeah shine Let's get a big, bright, brilliant beam of radiant light shine. That song had me dancing and moving. Bonnie, Bob, what a wonderful song and what a wonderful way to, to bring up the energy and tie it in with Reverend Karen's message. And, and Reverend Karen, your story that you shared, that actually relates a lot to me. And I, and I feel hearing that i'm sure it relates to everybody else that's listening in as well but 
the the science of mind principles that you bring into every message is absolutely wonderful. And so for, for all of you that are listening, is you you know what we're all about. We're, we're here for support, support in prayer, support and in inspiration and music that you just heard, support in, in our community, support in many ways. And we really honor and appreciate your, your generous financial gifts. Now, there's three ways to be able to, to donate. By going to our website, which you see on the screen, www.cslsarasota.com, you'll find there's three easy ways to donate. You can select the donate button and contribute via PayPal or by credit card. You can mail a check to the address that's on the screen or you can set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. And now I invite you to take your virtual gift in your hand, place it over your heart, blessing it as you share it, and know with me that my gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper, and a divine flow returns it to me multiplied abundantly. And please join me in sharing our offering affirmation. The words can now be seen on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you. Did you also know that your financial support also does good in a local community and beyond? We believe in tithing. So 10% of what we bring in, we like to share with the local Sarasota community, as well as national programs that align with our general mission of empowering spirituality as a loving, worldwide, inclusive community. This month's recipient is called Also Youth of Sarasota. Their mission is empowering LGBTQ youth and their allies in creating inclusive communities. They do this with various programs, with online support, as well as support groups. Thank you, our team of financial contributors for making it possible for us to support you and also tie to this organization's important work in the world. Would you like prayer support? Well, also on our website is a prayer request button, which allows you to fill out a simple prayer request form. And we receive that. And our four licensed spiritual practitioners, which is Kathleen Franker, Jaron Nelson, Jim Grove, and myself, we actually pray for you in recognizing your spiritual truth, regardless of whatever situation you're going through. And if you want to be in the know, sign up for our e-newsletter, which is also on our website or check out our Facebook page for any upcoming activities. And now I have a few brief announcements. Number one, our annual meeting is coming up on Sunday, March 28th at 11.30 a.m. We're gonna be hosting this via Zoom and the information will actually be on our website. And this will be an opportunity when you get to meet our board of trustees, as well as hear some updates from Reverend Karen and we get to hear from you as well. We'd love to have you there. Another announcement is pop-up prayers. If you haven't seen Jaron Nelson's pop-up prayers yet, you definitely want to tune into them. They're on Facebook and they're on YouTube and they come out midweek. And she shares a affirmational prayer. She shares an affirmation that you can take with you throughout the week, as well as a short reading. These are very positive and very uplifting. She's open to any suggestions that you're seeking in prayer. And if you want to just email her for suggestions that you want to give her, the email is on the screen, as well as you can look back in the uh, library of what's been, what's been saved on our, our newsletter, as well as also in the YouTube channel and also on our Facebook page. Lastly, 
don't forget spiritual living circles they are hosted by our spiritual practitioner jim grove they're at wednesday on from 7 to 8 p.m via zoom uh, if you see jim's email there you want you want to um, ask for the zoom link he will send it to you and it's they're very enriching spiritual talks and they're times that you can actually connect with those in our community they're informal they're free they're open to everybody so please go ahead and email jim so you can get the invite for the zoom link and this week's article that they're going to be discussing is from the science of mind magazine actually every article is from the science of mind magazine this one is the original artist by kelly robbins and now i, I want to thank you for showing up this morning i hope you found the message as well as the entire morning uplifting and and fun and energetic and please go forward into your week with the intention of love and peace and now join us with our closing song let there be peace on earth the words will be written on your screen. Thank you. Namaste. Let this be my song. 